Welcome. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, right now I have t equals 13 pi over 6, OK? And what I'm going to do for this problem is, um, rather than kind of sketching where 13 pi over 6 is, which you'd probably very quickly be able to determine is going to be in your first quadrant, I really want to emphasize the fact that we can always find coterminal angles. And you could probably really easily solve this problem by doing the coterminal angle in your head. Sorry. So when looking at coterminal angles, remember, we're, all we're going to do is just add and subtract 2 pi. So if I look at this, I'm not going to want to add 2 pi to this. Because remember, coterminal angles are angles that have the exact same. I say that so fast like I know what I'm doing. Coterminal angles are, the, are angles that have the exact same initial and terminal side. So if I have 13 pi over 6, and I want to find an angle that's coterminal but that's smaller than 13 over pi, I'm going to subtract 2 pi because that's still going to give me, that's just one revolution. Well, instead of subtracting 2 pi, um, I want to have, make sure it has the same denominator. So really, I'm going to subtract 13 pi over 6 minus, well, 2 pi with the denominator 6 is the, really the same thing as 12 pi over 6, right? Because 12 divided by 6 is 2. So now when I subtract these, I see my angle is t equals pi over 6, where you guys can see, well, pi over 6, that point is very simple, square root of 3 over 2, comma, 1 half. Now, I know I made the problem a lot more complicated, and I could, you probably could have done the problem like that. But I just wanted to kind of explain the thinking. So when you come up to problems like this, you know, a lot of times you don't always have to take graphing them and break it into six you know, and stuff. You can start looking ahead and using coterminal angles or period as an aid and you know, doing some of the work in your head, and, and it'll come a lot quicker. All right, thanks.